What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're traveling to a level 6 maximum security prison in New Mexico. I personally have never been in a level 6 prison, but I have been in solitary confinement for months at a time. And it's the same thing, but usually guys in these level 6 prisons, they're doing it for years. When I was locked down in these solitary situations, at least I knew that I was going to be getting out sometime soon. In this clip, you're going to see uh, real inmates break down what it's like to live under this 23-in-1 lockdown status. And you're also going to see the Secretary of Corrections going in undercover to live a little 48 hours in solitary as well. So let's get right into it. New Mexico, level 6, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoy this type of content, do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. So why is the secretary willing to put himself through this? He's decided he wants to reform the state's use of solitary because most of these inmates will end up right back on our streets. We're sending people back to our neighborhoods worse than when they came. As the clock starts running on his 48-hour lockdown, the secretary settles into his 12 by 7 concrete cell. 12 by 7 cell is not too shabby, and he has a window in that puppy. But you gotta keep in mind, they're probably making these cells a little bit bigger and a little sunlight in there because they're never leaving them. You know what I mean? They just go to a shower or a little dog cage for a little bit of exercise for an hour a day. So I would imagine that these cells are probably a little more accommodating than others. But I think everybody should live 48 hours in a cell. Just get a little taste of it. It'll probably deter a lot of crimes in the future. They'll remember them damn 48 hours for the rest of their life, I can guarantee it. Level six is divided up into three separate units housing a total of 282 inmates. Combined, these men have killed 138 people. Damn, over 200 inmates in this facility, and with them all combined, they've killed 138 people. And that's why this is a level six. See, people will watch these documentaries and actually start feeling sorry for some of these cats. But you don't know nothing about that guy's past, man. Every time I see an inmate in a level six prison pod, I say, man, that guy's either a gruesome ass killer or he just got caught up in the mix in the prison game. If you were to ask me, that's the only two type of individuals in these level sixes. But man, 138 people killed by these inmates' hands. In cell 111 is Freddy Munoz. This is my home right here. For good or bad, this is it. Growing up, Munoz wanted to be an astronaut, but at age 13, he got caught up in gangs. Damn, man, Freddie wanted to be an astronaut, but them damn gangs got him caught up in the mix of level six. He could have been on Apollo 26. How many murders did you commit? Two. Two murders. Because of his violent past and his gang affiliation, prison officials have kept him in a cell like this every day for the past 10 years. These four walls mm. are all he's got. He knows every crack, every inch of peeling paint. What does that do to your head? It is perpetual misery. I can't help but to give a shout out to Wes Watson every single time I hear the word perpetual. That's like level six inmate lingo. I use it now whenever I go to 7-Eleven or something. I'm like, yeah, I would like a perpetual pack of cigarettes. Now, nah, in all seriousness, just the simple fact that this guy's still talking to the camera crew with a little bit of common sense after 10 years in that damn box is an amazing thing. If you were to ask me, his mind is solid. It's ennui, it's monotony, it's repetition. He says the only way to keep it together in here is to establish a strict routine, a sort of imitation of life. Yep. Yep. I exercise, I read a lot. If I didn't have books, I probably would have already gone insane. Then books keep going when you're in a side pocket. I'd say what? Only time I read a whole book other than the Bible was in the hole. And that book sucked, but that was all I had, you know? So I can't even imagine sitting in that cell for 10 years, man. That's crazy as hell. A few cells away, Daniel Herrera. He's also in solitary because of his gang affiliation. He's 23 years <sighs> old and serving a sentence for kidnapping. This is where we live. I mean, right here, you can see the width of our rooms. At our request, he shows us one of the tricks of solitary. Fish game. This is called fishing. Look, they don't play with that kidnapping and abduction, and it's very easy to get that damn charge. Now, I don't know if they meant to do this, but they're actually showing you a different type of inmate. Like I said in the beginning, they're either a gruesome killer or they got caught up in the mix in prison. The previous guy, they started off by saying that he killed two people. He's in there for murder. And this guy, they're saying that he's in there because of gangs. So if I were to guess, this guy won't be a level six for too long as long as he stays out of trouble. 
but fishing is mainly a great way to communicate or you know transport things from cell to cell when i was back in the side pocket there was a couple rasta cats back there right and they had tobacco that they were pumping and they chose to be in that side pocket because they didn't want to cut off their dreads i mean they didn't want to i'm sure but that's where they're gonna go but those Rasta guys, man, I would fish a couple cigarettes from them a day and I would pay them with stamps because back there they take your commissary canteen or whatever, electronics. And the only thing you're really allowed to have is book, legal mail and, you know, stamps, regular mail to contact your attorney or your loved ones. When I was in there, a book of stamps was 10 bucks. And guess what? <laughs> they fit right up under the cell. They're like a piece of paper. Can't be fishing or sliding over a bottle of suave under that puppy. Back in Secretary Mercantile's cell, nine hours in, he brushes his teeth and gets ready for a long night. And Hold on, man. No way. Mr. Secretary, this is not fair. No, sir, it's not. You're fresh in. There's no way you hit commissary already, man. He's got a bag of milk and that golden Colombian. I could easily do 29 flat with a consistent flow of gold bag. But this cell ain't too bad. What is this? He's got, uh, I don't know what the hell this thing is. It's tied down to the desk, though. Whatever it might be. Really ain't shit in here. It's ready for a long night in a strange and hidden world. It's chow time. Chow time, what? God, when not no the food syrup. Trays, officer that guy probably got about 13 bodies under his belt, and he's screaming about the jelly and the syrup. Is starting to get to the secretary. <sighs> he's trying to pass the time by working out, but there's only so much of that you can do. Yep. Oh, damn, he dropped down to his skivvies. is setting in. On the flip side, there are inmates like Freddy Munoz, who despite the severity of his crimes, has been a model inmate and renounced his gang affiliation. Munoz is now one of a select few handpicked to move out of solitary and into the general population of the prison as part of the secretary's plan to reduce the population in solitary. I just made a video the other day explaining how short timers are housed with these killers, you know, because we do stories all the time about someone who had life is in a cell with someone who only had three years and the guy that had life ended up killing him. How? How does it happen? Well, this is how. Not saying that's what's going to happen with this individual, but this guy's been in that damn cell for 10 years and they're about to throw him straight in the general population, probably like a level five, test the waters. If he does good, make it down to a three, four. And that's when he'll see the short timers coming in and out. But he's about to have a crash course into uh, general population, and there's going to be a wide variety of mentalities and personalities. And I don't know if he'll be ready for it after doing 10 years in that damn tank. That'd be one hell of a reality show, right? To see live how this guy interacts after being in that cell for so long. And it's crazy how I'm reacting to this, and it was kind of just falling in line with the video I did. It all fits together perfectly, like it was meant to be including this guy being in the cell for 10 years. I told y'all that these guys with vicious crimes, they usually start off doing the first 10 years of their bid in level six. Here you go. He just did a 10 clip. To be able to go outside without being handcuffed and restrained every day, I think that that would be very good for me. It's the final morning for this undercover boss. Finally, the moment he's been waiting for. Relief. Freedom. After 48 hours on the inside, he's concluded solitary should be used, but sparingly and only for the most dangerous. There is a such thing as evil, and it's up to me to make sure that not only am I protecting other inmates from them, but I'm also protecting my staff from them. And that's the ultimate question, right? Are these individuals that are housed in these level sixes, do they really deserve to be there? But I think nowadays there's definitely, with all the rules and regulations and strict punishments, there's many individuals in these level sixes that do not belong and should be removed immediately, man, because it can, it can mess with your mind. That guy said, man, you know, it would, you know, not being uh, restrained and handcuffed every time I move somewhere, you know, you want, you could tell he wanted to be smiling and acting wild, but really, He's so mentally messed up that he kept it inside and said it, it would be really it would be really good for me. But actually, 10 years of doing that, it would be exuberantly good for him. And that's probably what he's feeling like, knowing that he's got hand picked to go down into GP. But it is New Mexico. And people that 
uh, say no to the organization that they used to be in could have a lot more troubles in GP than in level six. But that's it for Solitary Confinement Level 6, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned a few things. If you did, hit the like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And my prayers go out to individuals that might be in these cells that truly don't deserve it. Because, man, it's treacherous. But as always, I salute every last one you've been supporting me since the beginning. And everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.